When Winter asked me to share, I didn't know exactly what I would share about, and I prayed about it last night, and I still didn't know this morning what I was going to share about, so I was still praying for it. People were praying for me, so it might be a wild ride. I, you know, I'm not sure exactly what's going to come out, but I do feel that God laid some things on my heart to share with you all. First off, um, the thing I wanted to say is adoption is God-ordained. It's in the Old Testament. It's in the New Testament. I don't know. How many scriptures um, address adoption? I tried to look it up. It's over 40. Um, but um, So I was just going to read a couple of them. Um, the first one was, it's back in the Old Testament in Isaiah. Isaiah 1, 17. Uh, Learn to do good. Seek justice. Help the oppressed. Defend the orphan. Fight, fight for the rights of widows. So that's in the Old Testament. And then Autumn referenced... Um, James 1.27, pure and true religion in the sight of God our Father means that we must care for the orphans and widows in their troubles and refuse to let the world corrupt us. So I just wanted to illustrate that because adoption's in the Old Testament, orphans care for orphans, and it's in the New Testament. It's not, it's all the way through the Bible. I'm going to set that down. It's hard to carry your Bible and hold the microphone at the same time. So I was praying, um, you know, what what God wanted me to share. And um, I talked to Akaya, my daughter, and she said, well, why don't you um, make sure you let them know that it's not all like roses. It's not like getting a puppy or something like that. <laughs> Because there's a, you know, uh, all adopted people have a backstory, um, something that happened to them to make the adoption um, had, have to come about. There's a reason um, that we're adopted. I'm an adoptee, and I have four adopted children. So um, this morning, I felt like God was like showing me like very strongly that adoption's about redemption, and. I almost can't like separate it. Like when I look at what adoption is, you take broken, like I was conceived of rape, okay? That's broken, right? And my birth mother had to place me for adoption. But my adoptive family is awesome. They raised me, they loved me. I had a great childhood and um, I was very close with them. That's redemption, you know? So you've got broken and then you've got redemption. And that's what Jesus did on the cross for us. And sin came into the world. Um, we're broken at that point, and all of us deal with sin in our life. I don't think there's any of us that walk like a sin-free life or we're not affected by it in some way. But Jesus' death on the cross reconciled us and gave us a new hope and um, a way to be connected to the Creator again, a way for our life to be redeemed out of the ashes, so to speak. And I really can't like separate adoption from that. Um, adoption's created because there's a brokenness. And um, like Akaya was abandoned in China at a public building. And I don't know what her backstory was, but she wanted me to, she, she allowed me to share that that's what happened to her. I don't know um, under what circumstances she was conceived. I don't know if it was the one child policy that forced her birth parents to abandon her. I, I don't know what her story is, but. There was brokenness there, and um, but God made a way for that brokenness to be redeemed. Yeah, and it's not easy. Um, if you're called to adoption, you should stick. You should stick to that call. You're going to need to know. Like if you are called to adoption and you feel it in your heart, you have to hang on to that through the process because in dealing with the brokenness, um, there, there's a lot of stress. Um, like a, for example, Akaya. Uh, screamed probably the first three weeks. She screamed all the way from China, and probably the first three weeks, Dave couldn't, my husband couldn't walk into the room without her screaming. She was terrified of men. She hadn't been held. I, she was nine months old when I adopted her, and because her orphanage was so overwrought um, and resources were so few, they didn't even hold the babies. They'd go through and they'd stick the bottles in their mouth. They might wash them off once a week, but they never picked them up. They were just in a crib, and they weren't loved. So they didn't know. Like, when I would pick her up, she would freak out because she had no experience with human contact. 
but she wanted to be picked up at the same time. Like, because when I put her down, she'd cry because I wasn't holding her. But when I pick her up, she'd scream because she wasn't used to human contact. So walking through that is not easy. <laughs> And probably for the first two years of her life, it took a lot of prayer for our family to get through that, um, for us to deal with a crying, grieving child that we didn't know how to touch or love. Um, but it, and I believe it was prayer, answered prayer that, that snapped that. I mean, it was just one day she woke up and it was gone. The grief was gone. Um, but I caution you, you know, everybody can play a part in adoption, like, Maybe you're called to support somebody who's just adopting, or maybe you're called to give funding to somebody who's adopting. Everybody can play a part. Our church is called. The church of God is called throughout the Bible to play a part, you know, open it up. It's, that's what it says. But not everybody's called to actually bring an orphan into their home because it's not easy. Um, and Akaya wanted me to share that with you. The process can be rough and ugly sometimes. Um, but know you're called. Pray through it. Seek friends. I had a lot of friends and support in my church here. A lot of you guys prayed for us. A lot of you guys helped me, and I appreciate that. That's my adoption story. <laughs> 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 <laughs>